Hey, welcome back everyone. Out here in the outdoor kitchen picking up uh, where we left off. And today I'm going to show you how I built the rest of our kitchen cabinets. So let's get to it. <laughs> All right, let me show you what we have going on here with these uh, counters and cabinets. And I'm gonna kind of briefly uh, show you how I went about this. Um, hopefully it helps you. This is my first time working with metal studs. So everything I did, I kind of either learned by trial and error or YouTube or Google or you know other, some other resource. So um, I used 20 gauge metal studs uh, for everything. Um, three five eighths inch thick and a quarter one and a quarter inch legs uh, on that and it worked quite well and a couple tips here before we get going is make sure you have this tool here it is a C C vise with the blunt kind of grips at the end this tool makes your life easier and when you're dealing with metal studs all you got to do you know is grab your track uh, grab your your stud that you need to attach. You're going to use that C clamp and set it so it grips it nice and tight. You're going to clamp those two together where you want it. Grab your drill. Grab your um, sheet metal screw, whether it's self-tapping or or pointed, and it will easily attach those two together where you need it. You know, flip that over, go to the other side, reattach your vise, screw it in on the other side, and it's easy peasy. Um, and I'm telling you that vice makes all the difference. It's indispensable um, when you're working with metal framing. And so if you're going to attempt this, spend the 10 bucks or whatever that tool was um, and make your life easier. Um, it'll not only save you frustration, but it's also going to uh, make your project go quicker and uh, everything's going to go better. So that's tip number one there. Um, otherwise, um, how I went about this. So notice um, on this side. I use six inch concrete block on the ends. The reason I did that is to gain and give this back wall some more structural strength. Um, it was sitting on a small footing and I, I didn't trust it not moving over time. So I poured this pad in a prior video, which gave this that footing a little bit more strength. And now I have two six inch uh, columns on each side here, vertical rebar epoxied into the pad horizontal report bar in the top course uh, epoxied into the back wall all course filled with concrete and so now if that wall wants to move it's going to have to deal with the rebar and all that concrete in there as well so I think I've shored that wall up at least as well as I need to um, if it moves at this point then you know so be it um, I did the same thing over here horizontal rebar on the top course busted out the tops of each of those to make room for that rebar and horizontal rebar epoxied into the pad. Um, and to do that, uh, I'm just show you the new toy I bought is this Botch GBH18V20. So this, my, I had a Makita hammer drill. This is standard kind of hammer drill like you might normally see. Uh, it died finally. And I went out and bought this. I already have botched drills and have all the power packs and everything. So I decided to pick this up. It was on clearance at uh, Menards, I believe. Um, and so I decided to pick it up. And oh my goodness. Like the difference between this, which is battery pack powered, and this is night and day different. This will drill um, a half inch hole through the pad in about five seconds. It's it's insane. Um I think I actually giggled the first time I used it, um, and that there's no effort. So that is a huge uh, purchase as well, and well worth it. Um, but yeah, and so I use that um, to core all the holes for the rebar. Also use that to drill all the holes uh, to attach the uh, 20 gauge track into the concrete, and I just used uh, concrete screws and washers. Uh, to attach that to the concrete. I use washers just to give it a little bit more pull out strength um, Just used I just used one screw at each joint um, You can use more it'll make it structurally probably more sound if you use more um, but this is all going to be covered with uh, Cement board and that cement board is really going to give it a lot of lateral 
and structural strength um, as you screw that into place. You can also see where the um, uh, metal uh, framing came up against the blocks. There are some gaps there just because either I cut it short or it's out of alignment or not plumb something. Um, I just went through and filled all these gaps in with liquid nails just to fill the gap and then also just to give another bond point between this wall and uh, those blocks. But otherwise, um, I have an access door going in here, a triple drawer going in here, a double drawer going in here, and a top drawer, bottom door, access door on the bottom going in here. And then this space is going to be used for a power burner for a wok or frying um, or just cooking, you know, a sauce, whatever it may be. And I still have one thing to do, and that is to put in this vertical back wall at the correct depth. And so a couple things to keep in mind when you're building out something like this for a power burner or a grill is make sure as you're focused, when you're figuring out the depth you need uh, for your built-in, make sure you account for the depth of your countertop. Because if you don't, your, your cutout is going to be too low. And when you set it in, um, you're not going to be able to fit the grill in because you're going to have this big space under it um, because you didn't account for uh, your countertop and so make sure you count for that in the depth and so if your countertop's two and a quarter inches and your depth needs to be eight inches you want to make sure that the depth you have here um, is five and three quarters because five and three quarters plus two and a quarter gives you your eight inch overall depth and so that's that's important and then also when you're figuring out your depth which you can see i haven't put my wall in yet and I, um, there's a reason for that is I don't exactly know how I'm going, how thick this is going to be in the front. I'm going to use stone. So I'm thinking it's two inches, but if my depth I need for that burner is 15 inches and my finished front face is going to be uh, two inches, then the, I want the wall depth to actually be 13 inches because the 13 plus the two for the finish will give me my total um, of 15. That way the front of the burner will sit nice and flush with the front of your finished material. And so if your finished material is a half inch, you'd use a 14 and a half inch depth. And so it really depends on what finished material you're using. So keep that in mind, because if you don't take your measurements and your, and your, um, your enclosure openings based on finished measurements, then uh, you're going to have some problems. And if you don't account for this, you're going to end up with a big gap behind your appliance. And you're going to have to then figure out a way to, to patch that. And that is not going to look good. Um, and you can also see inside for all electrical, um, use watertight fittings, um, and um, for that um, I used, had one inch PVC coming up, converted to three quarters, watertight boxes, watertight fittings, 12 gauge wire for a 20 amp circuit, and then over here, um, cut a hole in the block, put an elbow in it, glued it into the back, and then encased it with concrete and it is it's solid so that's how i handled my um, electrical outlets i didn't have room i did not put any in the front um, didn't really think i needed to i probably won't be using too much electrical out here but um, the side one i figured would be good enough and my island has two as well so let's move over to this other side here quick um, similar but different over here um, i have a double drawer on the side access door on the right same framing um, framed it all the way around except for this side where I just used a top um, top track and screwed it in just to give us some structural strength um, you know between the gaps of the the drawer headers and the the drawer footers the bottom supports top supports just put these braces in just to give us some more strength um, all the way around um, so pretty straightforward there again watertight fittings uh, and weatherproof boxes um, in here as well. I got power power coming in, power going out to the other uh, cabinet that we just looked at over there. Um, I got another line going out to an outlet that's set up the same way um, as the other one. And I got then power going into this box, which this will have a, a paddle switch in it, which then goes out to this and then up into the uh, pizza oven enclosure and this will then go to the lights that'll be inside the pizza oven enclosure and then that switch will turn those lights on and off
And then just quickly showing you how I did this outlet, same way, cut the block, put the box in, glued it. This is actually a weatherproof box with a um, fitting in the back. And so I had the PVC going straight out the back of that, of that box, converting to watertight and all the way to the, to the junction box here. So pretty straightforward. Um, again, use liquid nails where the metal met the concrete just to give it some a better adhesion and, and support there. Um, same mechanism to attach it to the concrete. Uh, two and a quarter or two and three quarters inch maybe. Um, concrete screws with washers. And then over here, um, I didn't use metal. I used concrete. And this is because um, this area is going to have the Argentine grill. And it's a 36 inch grill, so I needed a 37 inch opening. I actually have 37 three quarters, and so I'm gonna add some cement board onto this area right here just to um, close that gap in a little bit. And um, the reason I use concrete, a couple of reasons. One is um, I wanted it to not be combustible, uh, which obviously metal is not combustible as well, but um, the second component is um, the, the grill is heavy. It's maybe 600, five, 600 pounds. And so, um, I had a lot more confidence that a concrete block, um, structure and, and, uh, foundation support would be able to hold that weight over time versus, you know, steel. And, and definitely you can, you can build out of steel. It would work, but, um, I just felt better with this. And so I use four inch block to kind of build the exterior of uh, the enclosure that I needed. And then I use eight inch block um, to where the grill will sit. And then I'm gonna be pouring a pad on top of this with this hole in the middle being storage for firewood. And so um, that's the plan there. Um, I filled all the cavities in the four inch block, filled the cavities in the eight inch block. So this is ready to go uh, for when I get the Argentine grill, which should be shipping. Here in the next few days so i should have uh, maybe a uncrating an arrival video for that coming here soon so overall this project uh was pretty straightforward i had never worked with metal studs before so definitely learned a lot along the way um, make sure you wear gloves and eye protection when you're cutting it i used my uh, dewalt 12 inch compound miter with a uh, metal or a steel blade on it um, and it cut it quite well um, but it sends up a lot of sparks it's loud and these edges on these uh, on these studs they'll get your fingers um, so make sure wear protection um, you'll be thankful you did uh, the first time when you catch a corner or you got a spark fly at your face um, otherwise yeah went pretty smooth straightforward um, and now I think we're moving on to concrete backer board. And so now I'm ready to enclose these in. And so check back on the next video and we'll show you how I approach that. Thanks for watching.